For as long as our records go back, humans have been looking to the stars. We've used them to navigate, to track weather and tides, and to tell the stories of who we are and where we come from. Here in East Arnhem Land, that connection to the night sky has been passed down for generations. And now it's being carried into the future, propelled by rocket fuel. We're here in Australia, and we're gonna launch some rockets. We're following two NASA rocket missions as they try to understand how stars make the planets around them suitable for life. I'm Miles Hatfield, and in this episode, we're talking about living with the stars. The rocket range may be new, but for the people of East Arnhem Land, an interest in the night sky is about as far from new as you can get. This is the traditional home of the Yolnu people, one of the oldest cultures on Earth. As owners of the land and partners in establishing the new Arnhem Space Center, they're enriching cutting-edge space research with thousands of years of tradition connecting them to the night sky. As the NASA crew arrived in Australia, we met Jawa Yunupingu, elder in the Gumach clan, one of the 13 clans comprising the Yolnu nation. Jawa is also chairman of the Gumach Corporation, which represents the interests of the Gumach people in political and economic affairs. He invited us back to Gumach Corporation headquarters, where we spoke with him and Klaus Helms to learn more about his clan and their long history with the stars. We talk about the stars and uh, how important they are to the Yolnu people, culturally. You know, instead of compasses, we followed the stars to get to wherever we wanted to get to. One of the stories Jawa told us was about a prominent cluster of stars known to Westerners as the Pleiades. Cultures all over the world have stories about the Pleiades, which are often portrayed as siblings. The Gumach story tells of seven sisters who rode across the sky in a large canoe. The Gumach refer to them as Julpan, the Yolnu word for canoe. I think this is kind of the Milky Way, mm -hmm. where the stars are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Seven Sisters, we sing that in their song lines of the Julpan, them. This is the king of the Julpan. According to the story we were told, the Seven Sisters fish and gather food until they reach their home beyond the horizon where they cook it. The Yolnu say they can sometimes see the smoke from their fires from beyond the horizon. And the story is they look down and you know, look over the country as well as the, the, the people that they were once, you know. Learning these stories was a critical part of Jawa's upbringing and a tradition he hopes to uphold for the next generation. Whether it's from a painting like this, whether it's stories that were handed down from generation, you know, because that's how it happened back in the days. Everything was passed on. As the traditional landowners, the Gumach Corporation are leasing the land to Equatorial Launch Australia and have been working with them and NASA to make the launch range a reality. My clan, Gumach, they were well behind this. Because we were looking at the future kind of a perspective from us, you know, like the stars play a very important role in our uh, survival. The Gumach board selected Klaus Helms to join them in 2011, and for the past few years, he's been deeply involved in the project. We had many, many, many meetings with, uh, with NASA people uh, to see if it was even possible. When Scott first got here, we were walking through the bush of the compass, uh, through all those trees, and he was trying to visualize, could it be done? And, you know, we just had to assure him that, yeah, we can do it, we'll do it. And, you know, the next time he came, it was all cleared. So, you know, that was a sort of like a, a breather for him to think, oh, yeah. God, yeah. you know, we've got a site. In a few short days, that site will be put to its first test as it propels a rocket into the night sky for an even clearer view of the stars. But there's one star you can never see at night. I'll give you a hint. Today, it continues to grow our food, light our way, and keep us warm. That's not food. <laughs> That's right, our sun. Next time, how our sun helps us understand habitable worlds elsewhere in the universe and how it can mislead us. 